Today, the church celebrate the reality of the Holy Scripture, which reveals at his baptism that Christ Jesus is truly the Son of God and one of the three persons of the Holy Trinity. And as his cousin John the Baptizer lays his hands on the sinless one in the Jordan River, the voice of God the Father proclaims, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit de descends upon Christ Jesus in bodily form as the form of a dove. Now the meaning of Christmas, the reality of the eternal son of God descending to and taking on a human body and soul of his own creation is fulfilled at his baptism. The one born in Bethlehem is truly God, come to restore our corrupted human nature. The one placed in a lowly manger bed arrives to renew the entire creation as the God man by uniting humanity with divinity in himself. Christ has entered the world becoming like all human beings in all things except for sin. The incarnate savior of the world now enters the flowing created water of a river in order to make water holy, in order to bring his renewed blessing and fulfillment upon the world that he himself created. The entire creation was subject to futility because of the rebellion of our first parents. Now the new Adam comes to restore creation, including we humans. As St. Paul wrote, the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. The good news of the gospel is that the creator has become creation in order to make a new heaven and a new earth. The good news is that nothing is created in the beginning is profane or cut off from the blessing and the holiness of God. All the created order, the physical, the spiritual, the visible, the invisible, are all called to participate in the divine glory that our Lord has brought to the world in his only begotten Son. The good news of the gospel is to become one with the new heaven and earth of the kingdom of God. And Christ's baptism reveals that we too are saved along with the rest of creation. For through the water we share in his life as the apostle paul wrote as many of you as have been baptized into christ have put on christ in baptism the baptized received the garment of light that adam and eve lost when they distorted and damaged themselves their nature and cursed the entire creation with sin and death but the incarnate Son of God sanctifies, meaning makes holy and righteous, our bodies at his birth. And at his baptism, he sanctifies, makes holy and righteous the waters through which our calling as those created in the image and likeness of God is fulfilled. And we celebrate our Lord's healing of all reality and the beginnings of our healing for all eternity at our own baptism with that holy and righteous water. Holy water is a sign that God desires everything to find restoration and perfection in his kingdom. Well, don't we often pollute the water? Doesn't water sometimes seem our enemy in storms and floods? Yet water is God's essential gift to sustain our lives. We simply can't live without water. 
neither can anything else in nature. By entering into the Jordan at his baptism, Christ Jesus restores and fulfills water's life-giving reality and purposes. For holy water is a sign that every aspect of creation is to be sanctified, to be made holy and righteous, to become holy by the fulfillment of God's original purposes for creation. God created water to sustain us and to bring life to the world. Christ has restored water to its intended purposes by making it holy through his baptism. The sign fulfills his intention to sanctify every aspect of the universe that he himself spoke into existence. Every aspect of who we are as human beings is to be baptized into Christ, into him dying and us dying to sin, but him dying without sin, having no need to do so. But then the glorious rising with him in holiness. And then the gift of the progressing in sanctification, the progressing in being made holy, the progression of being truly in union with God. The faithful church is called not to escape this world, but to be in, but not of the world. The faithful church is not a philosophy. It's not a system of morality. The church isn't a matter of emotion or niceness. No, the church are called to become like God by God's grace, by way of the Holy Spirit. The church are called to participate in God's infinite holiness to the depths of our souls in every thought, word, and deed to respond to Christ Jesus' great blessing of the world such that we share in his life and become more fully who he created us to be in the first place in the image and likeness of God without that holy water without the baptism of Christ making water holy, without Christ being present, without the Holy Spirit being present in our baptism, there's no way to return to that likeness of God. But this doesn't magically happen either with a dunk into a tank or water sprinkled on one's head. There's no magic here. If we don't struggle against the world, and by we, I mean the baptized faithful, if we don't struggle against the world's vices and passions, if we don't cooperate with God's mercy by repentance and growth and holiness, if we don't journey towards union with God's holiness by living in the community of the church, by partaking regularly of the sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist when it's safe to do so, if we do not cultivate prayer of the heart and prayer that never ceases, as St. Paul encourages the church, then the life of the waters of baptism, the life that the waters of baptism bring are diverted by each of us. And instead of nourishing us spiritually, like water revives a shriveled plant on a hot, dry day, we remain shriveled as if on a hot, dry day. Remember, the life of the church is more than mere imitation. The life of the church is not just similarity with Christ Jesus. The life of the church is true union of the life of God with humanity. Christ Jesus' baptism makes holy the water in order for that to happen at our baptism. There's true union of God with humanity. For at our baptism, with our anointing, 
with the sealing of the Holy Spirit, the life of God from humanity in true union is achieved, but we have to want it. We have to want it. So we work, each of us, each of the penitent work within their very self in communion with others to do the will, to do that which pleases God. And Christ's baptism makes it possible for us to quench that thirst for holiness that we as created in the image and likeness of God all have within us, that yearning to be in union once again with God. Christ's baptism brings forth a divine life for which we humans were made for. This is the joyful, the blessed life of God, the Holy Trinity, that Christ Jesus has been brought into the world. Enter more fully into Christ's baptism, such that you die to sin and rise with him in holiness each and every day when you say yes to God instead of no to self in this world, on this world's terms. The healing of our souls, my dear brothers and sisters, is never a one-time event, but it's an ongoing journey of sharing more fully in the restoration that the sinless baptized Christ has brought to the world. So take up your cross and struggle to walk the way for becoming an embodiment of the fulfillment of the human person and the creation in God. That is what has happened in Christ's baptism, the fulfillment of the human person, fulfillment of the creation in God. Live humility, live kindness, live self-control, live peaceably, live love, for this reveals what happens when people put on Christ like a garment. As the Apostle Paul wrote to St. Titus, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Doing so is the way for the baptized church to provide this broken and hurting world a much needed sign of salvation, of healing, of wholeness, of victory over sin and death in Christ Jesus, which is revealed when the eternal Son of God comes to the waters of baptism with his dear cousin and is baptized, the heavens opened, and his Father says, you are my beloved Son, or you are my beloved daughter in this age. In you, I am well pleased. And the Holy Spirit rests upon him as the Holy Spirit rests upon each and every person that was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from that moment until today. The grace has been given. The life has been given. But we, the baptized faithful, need to want that, need to desire that, need to grow in that, and forever grow in union with God. Or even that which we have will be given away by our denial of the life and the light and the love of God that dwells within us. Amen. Amen.